Wonderful. Okay, it's time now for our fourth and final speaker um, of the evening. Um, originally from Macclesfield, British artist David Shrigley is well known and loved for his drawings that sardonically comment on everything from politics to modern life. We're delighted that he's uh, joining us this evening to talk through basically what's been keeping him busy during lockdown. Um, David, please uh, turn on your audio and video um, when you have a second. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> Fine, how are you? All good, thank you. Yeah, no, very, um, just an amazing, amazing three. I haven't been listening to you for the last <laughs> hour and a half. But. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you're now in Brighton, is that right? How's everything down there? Uh, it's all right, yeah. I've, um, I've been in Devon, because I live in Devon most of the time, and my studio is in Brighton. But I just found out uh, yesterday that um, I could have come here whenever I like, because it's totally fine to travel hundreds of miles and basically do whatever you like during lockdown. So... It is, isn't it? I am. Back Who knew? <laughs> Convenient, yeah. Um, well, listen, I'm going to let you um, take over the screens and uh, do your presentation. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of catch up with you in, in 10, 12 minutes. Guys, okay. put your questions on the, on the question group as always, and I'll, I'll try and get to them. Okay. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Share. And then I'm going to... Uh, Right, play my presentation. Is that all good? That looks perfect. We're in. All right. Good. All right. Well, um, I am basically, um, maybe disappointingly, just going to show you what I posted on Instagram uh, during lockdown. Um, I, uh, I guess it's the uh, uh, topic of the month, isn't it? Lockdown. What did you do during lockdown? Um, are you, how are you coping with lockdown? Um, how are you going to cope with lockdown? And then there's the other questions that come along, which are, um, will you make a small video of your studio on your iPhone and, uh, and let us see that, which I've been asked to do about, um, about 12 times now, and which I've probably acquiesced about half the time. Um, but basically I work from home anyway. So, um, my activities as a visual artist, uh, have always been pretty homespun because I'm sort of best known for making 2d work on paper. So, um, just being isolated in, in my house was, is actually something I, I kind of embrace because it's sort of like what I do anyway. And, um, I, uh, I've been making, I guess I've been working on drawings at home for probably about 30 years, like ever since I left art school. Um, when I first left art school, I, um, I, I started drawing as, as the central part of my practice, which had kind of had always been. I just didn't realize that you were allowed to just make drawings. It turned out that you are, um, so I made uh, I made drawings and I published books and and then over the years I guess I've sort of become the become that guy that does that thing and and here I am. So um, I had I don't know seven hundred sheets of paper um, that I took with me to uh, to the house in Devon and uh, I've kind of used about half of them now and I've just every day I make maybe 10 or 15 drawings and um it's i guess the nice thing about lockdown i'm just going to flick through them maybe not talk about them um is that there's no uh you don't have to do anything anymore so there's no trips planned you're not going anywhere to do the exhibitions to visit art fairs to to do talks or this, that, and the other. So I was supposed to go to um, supposed to go to Hong Kong and Tokyo and New York and Berlin and Copenhagen and several other places that I can't remember. But and then the rest of you know that the rest of the year was pretty busy as well. A lot of travelling. Um, and then and now I don't have to go anywhere. In fact, you know, I thought I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. But as I said before. Um, we were misunderstood. We misunderstood. We are allowed to do whatever we like during lockdown. To hell with the consequences. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with the current state of British politics, uh, whatever. Anyway, forget about it. So um, 
drawing for me is quite a, a, a kind of meditative process in some ways. It's very something I've, I've done my whole life. I don't really, um, I don't know. I, I feel like art school was a bit of a blip for me. I, I've just been making drawings since I can remember in drawings with text. And, um, and then I guess you learn how to draw formally. And I went to Glasgow School of Art. Um, and that sort of changes things a little bit. And then I, um, I guess I found out about um, Marcel Duchamp and Andy Warhol. And, uh, and I guess that changed my thinking about art a little bit. But in terms of physically what I've done, I've always made work in this way. Um, I guess I'm, I'm in my 50s now, so it's obviously changed a lot over the years, or I've changed a lot anyway. Um, questions I get asked a lot are, you make funny art, don't you? Um, how do you deal with being funny or whatever, if it's supposed to be funny? And I say, I yeah, and, and they say, do you add the text first or the drawings later? Or what other things do you, um, can you draw is another thing that they ask me. Um, I don't know, the, change, I, the, the answers to those questions change depending on what mood I'm in. Um, I've become acutely aware of the importance of social media, I think, in this situation, because um, I guess I've sort of always been a bit of a, was a bit of a late starter. I was kind of forced to do social media maybe 10 years ago by a publicist. Um, but more recently I've started to embrace it and understand the possibilities of it. That it is Instagram is, is, is kind of like publishing. Um, I mean, I, I, I started, I was forced to do social media by my publisher and, um, and I've kind of realized now, ironically, that social media is, is a form of publishing and it sort of has become almost more important than um, publishing, making books. Uh, it's certainly a lot easier than making books. And um, as we, as a previous speaker just said, yeah, books are fraught with uh, the possibility of a disappointment um, when you get them back from the printer and they're printed all wrong. The nice thing about Instagram is if you do it wrong, you can just delete it, put it back up again. So that's good. Um, one of the interesting things about Instagram is that um, I guess more, more recently in maybe the last four or five years, I've started to allow other people to do the editorial process for me or to at least have the final edit of my work for exhibitions, not for books, I get to do that, and for Instagram, obviously. Um, but for exhibitions, for commercial exhibitions, which is how kind of how I make a living, mostly selling original artwork, um, I let other people decide. I let the gallerists decide, because they've got to sell the work. So I, I edit them a bit. I probably make an exhibition is usually about 40 or 50 drawings, and to, to get that many, I would do at least, um, probably maybe between 150 and 200 black and white drawings. And then I, I take away the ones that I really hate. And then I, I'm left with the other ones and I, I let them decide on the ones that go in the exhibition. And they never choose the brilliant ones. Um, behind me in the studio, um, you can't see it right now, but when I click off the screen, you will. There's a, there's a, there's a sign that says, really good drawings that nobody wants. And I was telling my friend, about this, who's also an artist, David Bellingham. And uh, we were at art school together. And I was saying, yeah, you know, I always get sent the inventory. Uh, periodically, I get sent the inventory from the commercial galleries that show me. And they, uh, I'm always really surprised that they've got the really good drawings are left because nobody wants them. And then the ones that they want are usually the ones with cats and dogs in them. And in a way, Instagram, I guess, uh, you know, you can um, sample the public um, enthusiasm for your work through the amount of likes you get for any individual drawing. And I always find it, I find it quite mystifying, actually. 
Um, I think I posted this drawing today of a cat. And um, I don't know, it doesn't actually seem that popular, unlike all the other drawings I've done of cats and dogs, but um, maybe, maybe the numbers will come up soon. Um, so I'm going to um, stop sharing. Stop sharing. I won't stop sharing. <laughs> I will just stop sharing my screen. Um, but I'm always willing to share. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. I'm trying in my mind. There's a little clock that's counting down <laughs> from 12 minutes, and I feel it's probably at a, I've got about 15 seconds left. Am I correct in that, Matt? Some, something like that. That's it's all good. Don't worry. We uh, <laughs> um, we can go to some questions from the audience. Um, there were quite a few, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask you a few questions if that's okay. Um, but I love the idea that there's uh, the, the cat and dog ones go first to the galleries. Can't think why. Um, yeah. The first question is from Sarah, and she says, how many iterations do you usually make of one idea? Um, is it like one and done, or do you kind of redo an idea a hundred times to get it perfect? Uh, I do it once, only once, unless, as happened recently, uh, Parcel Force lose the package with all your work in it, in which case you have to do it twice. But generally it is once. And it would be nice if a representative of Parcel Force were watching this because I really would like that back, that parcel. I don't unfortunately think we have Parcel Force on our, on our audience lists often, but um, we'll try and let them know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is highly annoying. So that's the only time you'd ever do something twice, uh, yes. David. Okay, oh, well, I think, you know, there's coffee, there's spills, you know, and there's, you know, dog <laughs> incident, you know, the dog will walk over things. <laughs> um, but even then I tried to, you know, make the footprints into the artwork, you know. Um, so I really, it is, I really try to do it once because it's hard doing it twice. I think it's hard, really hard. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. There's someone who's just realised in the chat that there's a, an entire package full of your work somewhere in the country that probably could be found. That, I know. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think everyone wants to know this, to be honest. I'm sure you get asked it a lot, but is, is there a place where you get your best ideas? I mean, is there a specific time of day or something when you, you know, I guess like when you find you're at your most creative, is there a time of day or a place that you go? Now, right <laughs> now, actually, when I've had my dinner, um, I'm on this special diet where I have to eat within a eight hour period and then I have 16 hours of not eating and um and so yeah I've eaten my dinner at about half past five which means I can have my breakfast at half past nine in the morning so yeah about half past five the nutrition will start to wear off at about um nine o'clock so that's when I stop um but yeah be between half past five between six and nine let's say so I'm giving you very valuable time right now you're giving us the, the very best. Yeah, the quality time, you know, where the, you know, the, it's functioning well. And uh, not that you have to be grateful for that, but, you know, I'm just saying. It does, but what I'm also saying is it doesn't get any better than this. So, you know, don't go to a conference. Don't go to a talk of mine. Not that there will be any more talks. Um, that's before, uh, before six in, in the evening. Otherwise, it's not going to be any good. I'm very pleased that we've got the best of you. Thank you so much yeah. for giving up the most valuable part of your day. Um, another question, do you still get uh, blank page anxiety? Um, someone's asked, and if so, how do you overcome it? Well, you know the answer to that question, obviously, whoever asked that. Um, you, you cover the page with stuff and then <laughs> anxiety disperses. That's what David Lynch does, isn't it? Anxiety disperses. <laughs> You cover the page and the anxiety disperses. Um, yes, that is, is not a flippant response. That is that, you know, the, the artwork doesn't make itself. You have to make it. So you just get on with it and stop being anxious. Fair enough. That's a, a harsh word for everyone out there. And finally, just one from, from an art student. Um, you kind of touched on art school as well. Um, and uh, this person asked, um, was there any point in going to art school? Um, would you recommend it? I guess there, she just, yeah, just said she's an art school student and not sure it was worth it, potentially. <laughs> mm, well, um, I think it's worth it if you've got 50 grand to chuck away. 
<laughs> I think that's the problem. You know, I, I, uh, I, I feel as if it is possible to have a, a, a good education outside art school if you're studying fine art. Um, I think I feel like I could give somebody an education in my studio kind of thing that would be uh, as valuable as, um, you know, in terms of tuition that would be as good as uh, art school. And that's not being arrogant that I'm some oracle of wisdom. It's, it's the fact that, you know, art students are in big classes, they don't get anywhere to work. They don't get access to tutors. They don't get access to workshops very much. Um, and I think that being a fine art student, I couldn't speak for other subjects, but being a student of fine art, you can, you just have to be in a studio with some other artists and have somebody who, who perhaps has more experience than you come to talk to you now and again, to just to talk to you about what you're doing, but you talk to them. And that, that's what fine art is. And it's not worth 50 grand uh, to be 50 grand in debt for that. Um, I don't think, um, I think, but I think it's a valuable experience because you get to spend time, you know, time make, doing your thing, discovering what kind of artist you want to be, what kind of art you want to make. And I think that's really valuable. Education is very valuable, but um, I left art school without any debt. Uh, and the people who are my age in there, you know, this time of life now, probably the majority of people who are watching this have got huge debt to do with their education um, in, in the UK and in the other parts of the world, obviously they have to pay anyway. But um, and I feel very bad about that. I feel like I want to, you know, it's a, it's a question that we talk about um, with friends, colleagues, a lot about how can we change this? And um, to wit, I, you know, looking at universities saying they've got a massive black hole in their finances. And I'm sort of like, so I don't care, you know. I, it just they're giving their money back, just drop out. I don't know. And, and that's very cynical. And I, you know, but education is massively important. I just feel like it's become a business, and it's not about educating people. It's not about you know we're saddling young people with massive debt where we shouldn't be. We, sh we should be um, letting them have a free education and encouraging them not just exploiting them. Yeah, here, here. Um, final question for you um, before I let you go. Um, there's obviously a great sense of kind of humour and sarcasm in your work. Do you perceive art as a medium to spread messages about politics and society, but in a kind of lighter way that I guess gets across a message in a, in a different, more nuanced way? Um, I've never intended to make any particular kind of art, but, uh, you know, I guess my work's about everything and anything. But I think that, you know, the, the idea that there's political art, non-political art is, uh, is perhaps a misconception. I think any, any artwork, even if you're making abstract painting, that can still be political because any um, artwork is about um, communication with other people. And what politics is, is um, the relationships between people. As soon as you bring another person into your world, it become it has a political dimension. So whether you whether you call it um, you know party politics or um, national politics or whatever, uh, you know we all make political decisions every day of our, every day of our lives. And those people who say they aren't interested in politics just basically misunderstand what politics is. Um, you know what we call politics is just an extension of the interactions that we have every day with other human beings. Um, so, uh, yeah, my work is political, but so is yours. <laughs> Fantastic. David, thanks so much. Um, yeah, it's been great talking to you and thank you for your presentation as well. Um, 